Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now today we are working on our 74 El Camino and we're going to be doing some plumbing. Okay, so we've got a mock-up dummy transmission. This is a 4L60, it's just an empty case. But I'm gonna use this to show you what we're gonna do underneath the car. So the case usually has this style of inverted flare fitting. So this is an adapter. This is a quarter inch NPS, which is a straight thread. It's not MPT, which is tapered. And these are threaded in here. This particular one, we've got a 5 16 and we have a 3 8 fitting. These are for inverted flares. On the transmission under the car, both fittings are 5 16 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a nipple flare like this. We're gonna use this little nipple and that's gonna go in this on the tranny. Now, it's, this is for inverted flare, so you'll get a good seal. So this is gonna thread in like that. We're gonna take a piece of this 5 16 transmission cooler line and we're gonna push it on here and secure that with a hose clamp. This is going to run from the transmission up to the frame where we're going to have a hard line that goes to the radiator. This is our hard line. So I buy this stuff in bulk. You can buy it in sticks at the parts store, but I like to buy in bulk and I use this cool little straightener that we got from Earl's Plumbing. And we'll put that in a vise and I'll show you how to straighten out a coil of tubing. And we're gonna run that and bend it to line up with the frame so we have a nice clean factory style look and have this short section that runs over to the frame for the flex because you can't do hard line all the way you've got to have at least one flex joint because the engine and transmission are going to shake and that will break the hard line we're going to show you guys all of that right now I'm going to show everybody how to straighten tubing. This is 5 16 steel fuel line with a tubing straightener. So first, I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit by hand. We're going to get it fed in here. We're going to open this up, get it started. There we go. Okay. And we're going to bring it down tight and just slowly uncoil it. So we've straightened out our tubing. Again, you can buy straight tubing if you don't have a tubing straightener. But if you do very much of this, then a tubing straightener is nice to have. So I'm just gonna put my tubing cutter right here. I already know approximately the length that I need, which is 42 inches. I need two pieces that are 42 inches long. And then I've got this marked at 42 in the center. I might end up trimming some more of this off. I've got leeway on this project. Okay. Whoops. All right. After you get your cut made, you take your little reamer tool and you put it inside. You just give it a couple of twists. That just cleans up the edge a little bit. Do that on both sides. It also has a file. So you can file it down if you need to. I'm gonna use our Eastwood flaring tool, set the die in the unit. I always push the tubing all the way up to the tool. I'm just gonna slightly snug it up. This is operation zero. That flushes everything. Then I tighten this down. We go to operation one, four, five, sixteenths. I'm just gonna put our bubble in it. Then we go over here to operation two, four, five, sixteenths. And this will do our double flare. I struggled a little too much with that. Pull it out. Perfect double flare every single time. So now we've got our fitting on the tubing. This side is not getting a, fl a fitting. This is just getting a bubble flare. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with our tool. We're gonna drop it in, snug it. Operation one, tighten it. There we 
we go. Operation two. Now we got a nice bubble flare. Double, this is a uh, double flare. Now we can take these to the car and start bending. All right, so we've got our tubing here and we're gonna start at the radiator. This just drops in between the engine and the frame just to get our layout. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come out just a, about a couple inches about right here, make a mark and I'm gonna do a 90. You gotta make sure that your fitting is in place if this slides back, you'll never get it back in place. So I've got my uh, tubing bender. You can see here, I'm gonna set it right there so that this wraps all the way around. You can always adjust it a little bit. Snap that out. Now, at this point, every bend has to be done with this angle in mind. If you need to bend it this way and you accidentally bend it this way, you're gonna have a problem. got our top side line. Might need a little tweak here and there, but I think this will work for what we need. Now we need to do the low side. And I'll bring it over about here. Down. The opposite way. Now we've got our lines bent the way we want them. Just gonna use one of these uh, spark plug wire separators to keep them kind of in position together at the back of the car. And that's about perfect. We're gonna put a clamp at the back of the frame and then we can connect our rubber lines. So we've got our El Camino on the ground and we've got a car on the lift. So we're gonna be working underneath the car. So to make this a little bit easier so you can see what we're doing, we're gonna use this dummy transmission. This is just an empty case. And we're gonna show you the different options on fittings for the transmission cooler. So you got a couple of different options. This is the hose barb I like to use when we're using standard hoses. So this is 3 8 hose barb and this is quarter 18 NPS thread. So this is kind of like NPT, but it's straight instead of tapered, which is what NPT is. Then you have this style, and this would be quarter inch NPS going to a dash six AN style fitting, which you would use with something like this. So this would thread in here, and then you can use a braided line or something like this. This is a push fit. And I like using these because they're easy to install. They're good for about 250 PSI. Your transmission is not sending that kind of pressure out to your cooler. So these work really well and they're super clean. Then you can use the standard multi-barb, which is this particular one's NPT. But this barb right here is longer and has more uh, more barbs themselves. These work, but some installations, this can stick out really far so that it, the hose doesn't kink, whereas this will fit a little bit easier. You can use these, but I prefer these. These are a little harder to find, but most parts stores have them. So this is a 4L60 case, 
but these fittings are the same all the way down to turbo 350s, uh, which is what we have in the car. And so you're gonna take this fitting and this just threads in here all the way and then you tighten it down, all right? And then you're gonna use transmission cooler line. You can use fuel line for this, but it's a little softer. It flexes more and with heat, it's gonna wanna bend and can swell. It does work. A lot of people use fuel line, but the right line to use is actual transmission line, which is a little thicker, a little stiffer, and holds up better against the heat. And so this just pushes on here, and then you secure that with a hose clamp. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep this underneath the car, run our lines up to the front, and plumb it to the radiator. All right, so we're gonna go under the car, we're gonna install these 3 8 by quarter NPS adapters. These are hose barbs, and these are uh, inverted flare, so you don't need any sealant, but these should just thread right into the transmission, just like that. These use a half inch socket just thread it in until it's nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten them. So then each one of these gets a hose clamp. We'll slide the hose over the barb and then tighten the hose clamp. We just want to snug this enough to it where it starts to bite into the rubber. Then so you just use this self-tapping screw and we're gonna use this little stainless steel bracket. And that is going to hold our main line in place. We do need to make an adjustment on the other line. Here we go. So I'm gonna route my hose up here. We'll make a bracket to go up here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and Pull that off. Put my hose clamp on the line. And then we'll push the line, the hose onto the line. Okay, there we go. Slide this down. Want to get it about down to where that flare is, which is right there. Tighten that up. When we make a bracket, we'll make a bracket that comes off of this bolt for the bell housing and we can get this line to flow exactly how we want and keep it away from all the hot exhaust. So we've got one, now we just need to wrap up the other. So same process. When I'm going over a metal line like this, I'd like to get at least a half an inch, if not three quarters or a full inch above the flare. is my personal preference. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna make this bracket once we get into the exhaust because I wanna be on under the lift and I wanna have the starter on and all of that stuff so I make sure nothing's in the way. For now, we're done. Let's make magic.